This video is just meant to give you a quick overview of the Charles Bazerman um, chapter that I asked you to read um, called Speech Acts, Genres, and Activity Systems. Um, this is a chapter from a larger edited collection put together both by um, Bazerman actually and also another scholar. And the point of the collection was to give training to um, anyone looking to research writing. Um, and every chapter was a different kind of research and analysis you can do. This particular chapter is on doing research and analysis of writing where you're focusing on genre. So it's going to be useful for us because when you're doing a genre um, analysis, as you're doing in your rationale for the genre recast project, um, you're analyzing a, a text's genre and looking at how it functions. So this text is basically a how-to on that. And as well, the opening of it that I've asked you to skim um, is also kind of a confirmation and rewording of what we talked about in the lecture on genre theory. Um, it kind of puts those same ideas into different words, so it might be useful for you if um, you wanted a bit more practice with those ideas. Um, a couple things I wanted to point you to in the text. Um, the very first chapter where he lays out the point of the chapter also really overlaps nicely with why we're learning genre. Um, there's a sentence in there, he writes, this chapter provides means to identify the conditions under which they, and by they he means genres, accomplish um, this work, to notice the regularity of text in carrying out recognizably similar tasks, and to see how specific professions, situations, and so social organizations can be associated with a limited range of text types. Um, all of that is about genre, right? So when he talks about um, their particular conditions under which genres do their work, um, that there are, there's a, when he talks about a regularity to text doing recognizably similar tasks, right, that's another way of saying genre. It's, ta it's texts that are recognizably similar to us um, and carry out similar functions, right? And then last, um, how specific professions, situations, and so social organizations can be associated with a limited range of text types. Again, that's the idea that particular communities have particular genres that are inherent in those communities. And that's an idea that we come back to in the final project for the class, um, where I ask you to look at a discourse community and um, make note of its writing practices or um, its literacies. Uh, to give an example from like a past uh, project or two, for instance, I've had students write about how um, a lifeguarding handbook organizes the work that lifeguards do or about how um, the rule book for a field hockey team organizes the work and attitudes and beliefs of the field hockey players. Um, those are just a couple examples of the way that genres can help to shape things that we do. Um, and he, and Bezerman kind of echoes that idea again here at the end of that first, same first paragraph saying, um, you know, that we look at genres in order to look at how people use texts in order to create new realities of meaning, relation, and knowledge. Really fancy way of just saying that um, genres help organize social relations, um, they help organize um, the ways we understand the world, and they, um, you know, help shape the things that we know. Um, in this first part that I've asked you to skim, um, I think that this first section is a little bit useful, um, and I also think that um, because it kind of gives you a sense for what an understanding of genres does. And then if you skip ahead, and then if you look at that typification and genres section, that's again a rehashing pretty directly of what we've talked about in terms of how um, genres help to um, organize social activities and relations. Um, you know, very pretty much um, putting into that into other words, the idea that um, Genres are recognizable texts with similarities to others. That's that's how we understand a genre as we see it and recognize something about it aligns with our expectations for what that text is supposed to look like um, and how they're useful for helping us to understand one another. Um, so that might be a useful part to kind of skim over. Um, and then he identifies... Uh, a couple towards the end of that same section, a couple of terms that might just be useful for when you're looking at the um, section I asked you to read more closely. A genre set, which is just basically what he's calling any set of uh, any set of genres that any like one person or community might use. So a genre you can imagine what a genre set for a student might include, right? PowerPoints and 
um, notes and homework assignments and things like that. Um, a genre system is kind of like within the same social situation, the different genre sets that are all in place. So like a teacher's genre set and a student's genre sets are both part of the same genre system. Um, not something that we're going to be using a lot, but you know, these are terms that he uses. So I just wanted you to know that there's a definition there in case you come across them later and you're confused. And he also talks about activity systems, um, systems of activity. Um, so just kind of a quick read of the end of that section will just kind of help you um, later on. Um, again, the, the part that I wanted you to focus most on, because I think it's most useful for you, is methodological issues and analytic tools. And this is basically where he gives researchers the nitty gritty of how to do this work. Um, so that's why I want you to read most closely and to take notes on the blog post for this, um, uh, at, for this um, reading asks you to um, take notes of what you're learning there about how you might kind of do genre analysis. Um, but probably also, you know, a selective reading of some of the beginning is also going to be part of what informs how you do genre analysis because it's important to understand what it is before we can analyze it, right? Um, and then there's a section called Applied Analysis, and that's where he walks through an example of how he would apply a genre analysis to, um, you know, one particular um, situation. Um, he looks at a sixth grade class in a suburban California public elementary school and looks at the genres at play there and how those kind of interact with the activity system of the classroom. So that's that reading. Um, hopefully this overview is helpful for helping you navigate that reading and get started. Um, and I hope that you find it useful.